Why are scenes important to cities and what makes them work? This is a work that I've been doing with Heather McKissick from Austin, uh, Austin Equation, ATX Equation, and we've been sort of understanding um, Austin, but I think we're starting to understand maybe some general patterns that are applicable to other cities. But a scene, uh, the way we've defined it, is something where you have enough density of, of activity um, in the communities and the organizations and people <clears throat> that it becomes a scene. You know, it, it starts to make a scene. It's, it's, it's something that you can identify even intuitively as something that's happening. You know, so in Austin, of course, our music scene was really our first scene that came online. Um, and then maybe we got a little ahead of ourselves and named ourselves the live music capital of the world when in fact, you know, we are really good at generating scenes. Uh, so it's like the live music and other scenes capital of the world. You know, but maybe that's how we modify it. Um, so there's a, a scene is a weird thing. Uh, you know, think about the kinds of structures that we have, organizational structures. Um, and actually, this is actually another back to Jane. Uh, her lesser known book is called um, Systems of Survival, in which she talks about two systems of organization and human activity, and she talks about the commercial and the guardian. So commercial, of course, is how we organize commerce and business and so on and so forth. And the guardian is how we organize our politics and our, you know, our rules and law and order and things like that. Um, <clears throat> if you think about a scene, it actually doesn't fit either of those two categories. A scene is itself, yes, you could maybe calculate the economic value that's being made in a scene, but it has, doesn't have a, uh, a command and control structure of any kind. It doesn't have a, it might have a set of leaders, but they are leaders only as long as the scene um, wants them to be leaders. Um, they aren't sort of elected into their roles. Um, so part of this interesting thing is that a scene has to be uh, nurtured in a different way. You know, in a way, if you organize a scene according to the other two structures, I think you'll squash it. You know, um, this is kind of what we've been learning with the entrepreneur scene in, in the work that I've been doing in the last year is how do you get all these independent agents who are truly independent, who are all running their own organizations or nonprofits or whatnot, that are all assisting in this entrepreneurial process, right? How do you get them to sort of in a self self-organize and self-identify um, rather than tell them what to do? So uh, that has been very interesting where I think that awareness of the scene is a huge thing. This is part of what we've been learning. For example, we made a map of the scene and being able to see a map of the scene goes, oh, and this is part of the scene and I'm part of the scene and here's how it fits. And if the map is done correctly or in a good way, it becomes very illustrative. It becomes useful to people. So, you know, in the entrepreneur scene, there's two different maps that we've done. We've actually done one by type of entrepreneurial venture, yeah. the other by stage. You know how entrepreneurs go through different stages. And so then now you can see, oh, if I'm in this stage, these are the organizations and things I can tap into. It also helps to identify gaps. So all of a sudden someone goes, yeah, but there's no one doing this. And all of a sudden, yeah, great. You want to help out with that, right? So whenever people talk to us about the entrepreneur scene in Austin, I always point them back to the scene. You know, and, I, and I say, this is our scene and this is how it works. Um, I think going back to Paul Graham and how this ties into scenes is that a city a city's ambition is going to, is going to have an influence on, on the kinds of scenes and the way the scenes work or don't work. Why is it not only important to participate in a scene, but also to contribute? Don't be part of the scenery, uh, be part of the scene. <laughs> this, I think that's new since we last talked. That's, the, uh, uh, that's how I always end all my scene talks, is don't be part of the scenery, be part of the scene. Um, as a path of engagement, you start with just simply participating in a scene, um, just taking from it as you need to. And then as you acquaint yourself with it and as you get, get better with it, you can start to contribute to it. Um, and so what, what Austinites, I think, intuitively understand is that when they participate more than just uh, consuming, when they start contributing, again, that same reciprocal loop starts to happen. So I think a scene's probably health is, is actually, you can measure it by the number of people that are, if you, if you take the total scene and you say, how many people are in these three concentric circles? of collaboration, contribution, and participation. If you have very few at the, in the middle and a lot as participation, it's probably a very weak scene. You know, when you have a lot more in that contributor pile and maybe a, a good core in the, in, the, in the collaborator pile, that's, that's gonna be a, a really vibrant scene.